Good morning, everybody. Yeah, that's that's right. That sounds like a morning trip. <laughs> good morning, good morning. 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 Company and, and they're they seem to slow down this summer. A little bit we talked about yesterday, so we'll talk about it a little bit later. Any other good news out there we need to talk about? Who's excited that school's starting? Woo! <laughs> I'm hearing some moms saying, Yes, that dress, the bad dress. I can't wait. Well, uh, my grandkids, uh, we're going to go spend one more week with Pa, and um, that's an adventure. <laughs> um, this time they're going to come. One week at a time. One week come one week, one the next week. One time to pop. Why are you laughing at me? Because you learn the ability to keep them separate and not have bicker is a beautiful thing. And they can entertain each other. Yeah. And that's the big thing. Entertain each other, not pop and entertain them. This is the guys. Uh, the stuff that I love to do, that's the topic. That's why I have a big fun Anyway, that's good. Let us, anybody else want to mention something or say this is what's going on in their life? Any guests that want to introduce themselves? I want to introduce, we have Miranda Dove. Who is, Hi, Miranda. Uh, Hi, checking us out. You're in school, correct? I'm finished, but I'm taking my state licensing. Oh, oh. good. Well, best of wishes to Thank you. We're you. glad you're here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite nieces named is Miranda, so you're going to be a good person. <laughs> And she's cute too, so I like that. Yeah, I like that. In my family, you have to be cute. I'm like, let us move on. I can't wait to Carrie, are you there? Carrie Green, are you there? Going once, going twice, gone. I have a CE class. Who's up this morning? Yeah, we are. Good. Um, yeah, that's me. Thomas Brown has a CE class this Thursday. So if you want to register, email Terry. I got just um, as you see up there, three hour CE class. 
um, July 22nd, which is Thursday from 10 to 1. Fine family room. Lunch is provided. I'll come just for lunch if nothing else, guys. And just just be here. It'll be a great seeing class. So do, do that. And what happened on the 21st, guys? What happens tomorrow? Oh, I know what happens tomorrow. Your downline money goes into your checking. And tomorrow's profit share day. So if you've got profit share, you're, you're excited. If you don't have profit share, ask us how you can do that because we can make it happen, guys. All right, let's turn with you guys. Good morning, Kelly Williams. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'm Sandra with Supreme. Um, this morning, we just want to live a little bit of inspiration and remind you guys that our mission at Supreme is to serve others before self. And that's really how we maintain our focus on you all as agents and purchase transactions. Yeah, we've got a couple of events coming up. So one of the goals we want to bring course education to you uh, and we want to all grow together uh, and achieve our personal and professional best so every month we've got a personal and professional best program this month that's this Thursday three o'clock Facebook live uh, we'll resend the um, I think the link is on the calendar we can, we can resend it out um, Gabby Douglas Gabby Douglas was uh, Olympic gold medal and medalist uh, for women's gymnastics in 2012 and again in 16. She won both the individual all around and the team gold medal. First person in history to, 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 to do that at the same Olympics. First American in history to do that at the same Olympics. And she um, also is the first person of color from any nation to win gold medal. So it's really, 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 really inspiring her story, how she overcame all the difficulties that she did. So please turn, tune in for that. And then um, renovation road trip. So who here would like to learn more information about renovating homes and about, you know, things that and actually see it live and in person, not just coming to a class, you know, and have some bozo like me present it, but, <laughs> but, but actually see it live in person. So um, uh, one of my customers who's also a realtor at the bucket office is, is in the midst of uh, renovating a duplex down on the West End. And um, she's invited everybody to come check it out Thursday the 29th at three o'clock. And then around four o'clock, we're all gonna you know, she'll go over, you can actually see what she's done, and she'll go over the process and everything. And then we're going to convene at um, Wild Haven Brewery and on um, the 4th. So, um, and, and kind of talk more in detail about it because there's no power yet on at the subject property. So, we, we don't want to stay there too right. Anyway, so that's going to be that's going to be pretty exciting. Um, and, and then finally, I just wanted to share, <clears throat> I was going to do it last week, but. Um, I mean, good news. So, um, a couple of weekends ago, a couple of parties ago, I got to take my uh, six-year-old nephew to, some, to see Tim Tebow, and there are some other athletes there at a, at a fellowship of Christian athletes uh, program in Woodstock. And um, he told a lot of stories, but one of them that really hit home, the kind of the, I said, kind of, I think it was down to the core of who he is. Um, he um, when he was a sophomore, you know, he was up for the Heisman Trophy. And he and the other four went up to New York and they were at the ceremony and they were talking and then they were getting, getting ready to announce the rewards. Went to television break, the MC comes down and he says to the uh, nominees, he said, one of you from now on will be known as the Heisman Trophy winner. You'll be known as Heisman Trophy winner, what have you. You'll always be known, you know, basically that, that will define you. Later on, of course, he won. And I mean, who, I mean, whether you love Florida or hate Florida, I think everybody can kind of say Tim Tebow is probably the greatest quarterback, college quarterback of all time, right? Not the greatest quarterback, but the, 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 the goat of, of college quarterbacks. And, and the statistics prove that out. And, <laughs> and, and um, yeah, so. Later on that year, he was on a mission trip to Thailand, and um, uh, he uh, they picked him up at the airport, and they said, "Before we go to our quarters where we're staying, we want to go um, see these people." And they drove through a shanty town, and they kept on driving, they kept on driving, they kept on driving, and finally, at, at the end of this shanty town, 
um, we came to a clearing and there were two lines of people all with their backs to them facing, you know, the other way. And they, they um, so what's there for? Well, they're, they're in line to get food. He said, do we have enough food to feed everybody? And he said, um, probably not. And a lot of those that don't get food today probably won't be back tomorrow. And then, um, I'm sorry, every time I, I tell this uh, thing about this story. Um, anyway, so then, you know, they're, they're talking to some of the people in line, and one of them steps out and pulls them aside. And he keeps on pulling them, and the people he's with, this is one of the locals, the people he's with think, okay, he's going to harm Tim Tebow. We can't let that happen. He said, no, it's fine. And he was pointing, sort of pointing to a kid and, um, that was over in a ditch, uh, covered in sewage and mud and all kinds of stuff. And he, um, uh, he had on a very tattered, holy T-shirt or shirt, and uh, it, it, was a, it was a blue and orange jersey with 15 on it Aww. and he said you know what i made it my mind then my life will be defined by impacting the lives of others and that, and not all the statistics not all the, the championships not all the awards but impacting the lives of others anyway i just i, I was like I wanted to share that with you all and that's why we're at where we are and our motto is serving others before self and we love doing that with all of you. Okay, guys. Carrie's um, here. Oh, no, 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 Thank you. How perfect. Vanna um, said, so don't forget, we have our um, C class on Thursday at 10 o'clock here in this very room. We are going to do lunch um, for those, um, you know, that attend, of course, on the break. So it's called Choose Your Own Adventure. So we're going to walk through the closing process, and then we're going to have it be very interactive where you guys will make choices and decisions for a certain situation, and then we'll see if it'll get you to a um, successful closing. So it'll be lots of fun in person. And um, we have a TMB shaker. I'm going to do a little trivia question for you guys. These are sports bottles um, or a margarita shaker, whatever you want to use it for. Or a nice bourbon drink. Yeah, or a nice bourbon drink. <laughs> That'd be a nice one. Just like this. Like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. If they don't have any tea. Right. Okay, yeah, I'll be taking raises their hand first. So I'm going to read the question, and then there it's multiple choice. So I'll say all the answers, and then whoever raises your hand first gets the answer. Um, I think that's correct, right? Yes. <laughs> Whoever gets it oh, wrong no. wins the prize. Fifteen hundred dollars. It is, yeah. Um, just so you're right out of line wallet. <laughs> oh girl. Oh, girl. Oh, girl. Um, what is the deadline for the lead-based paint exhibit to be fully completed and signed by the buyer and the seller? Oh, well, I don't even need to read. Binding it. agreement date. Okay. She's yes. Well, yes, prior to or at binding. So very good. Um, because the choices were prior to or at closing, because a lot of people think at closing is okay. Um, prior to the buyer taking possession, also not true. Um, prior to or at binding agreement, which is correct. And then the last choice was within 24 hours of the seller um, providing it uh, to the buyer. So we have all those options because those have all been questions to us, you know, so it gets confusing. I mean, y'all know it's a lot of information all the time. So um, congratulations, Ms. Cohen. You were the proud winner. I didn't listen to the directions. I realized after I was whistled to all yeah, the answers. So so maybe we shouldn't reward you. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> So you're the proud owner of the new Thomas and Brown Sport Bottle. Congratulations. Yay. If you have not RSVP'd yet, we still have some spots for the class. So do RSVP just so we have enough um, for lunch, you know, because Lord knows we all need to eat, right? Several times a day, Yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Yeah, we love when you come in with us. Okay, oh, nice. we have Bug Hat today, and he's going to come up and, and talk about bugs. No, no, no. Don't forget, right? Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that was weak. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. I spent 21 years in the Army. Yeah. Come on. I like that. Stand up. All right. So, Baga, how many of you all remember us from the Skyline days? 
Mm -hmm. okay. so that's who we are. Oh. Actually, all we did was a name change. Oh. Okay. Like so we decided to do a name change so we could have a common name across the United States. We're still in Florida, Georgia, and North Carolina. But we've got some even better news. How many of you all have ever heard of, I bet probably not that many of them, ever heard of Renekill North America? Okay. Renekill North America is the largest pest control company in the world. They're the third largest pest control company in the United States. So that's going to give us a lot of power. We've recently merged with them. But the nice thing about Remikil, unlike Terminex and Orkin that buys up these companies, a lot of these companies you may have dealt with, they suddenly, they no longer exist. They change their name and they've been merged in. Remikil doesn't do that. Everyone still stays the same. Anybody heard of Northwest? Mm -hmm. They're owned by Renekill North America. Anybody ever heard of Active Pest Control? Mm -hmm. yeah. They're owned by Renekill North America as well. So we've become a much, much bigger family. So a couple of things that have changed, and it's for the better. We've integrated a new system for our termite letters. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of Anybody ever heard of Natural Forms? It's a... Peer-to-peer -peer allows us to document all of our findings. So the nice thing about our termite letters now, instead of just getting the electronic form, you can get up to 12, no, sorry, 10 pictures attached as part of not only the inspection graph, but as part of the overall inspection as well. Any kind of findings we have. Because in your world, right, the more pictures you have, a lot of times it's better to explain things to a customer and stuff like that. As a Keller Williams partner, we still offer our letters to you at no cost. There is a caveat. Do not call the 1-800 number. Use my phone number or the my email address. If you call the 800 number, they're gonna wanna charge you. But we have deals with three or four Keller Williams in the Atlanta metro area. So that's gonna allow us to still provide those for you. Another thing I'm working on is, and it's been a bit of a pain, to get authorized as a CEU instructor for you guys. I've been an instructor for the pest control side for about 15 years, but I find it's kind of a little bit of a pain, but I'm close to getting my authorization for the, to teach CEUs for you guys, which will allow me to offer some classes as far as what to look for and, and Things that you know in general on home inspections. Other than that, I really don't have anything. We're glad to be back around and see you guys. Most uh, unlike you guys, we were not shut down. We were considered essential service. Yes, best control is considered essential service. Yeah, definitely. So we didn't stop working, but we're glad that we can get back around and see you guys. If you have any questions, concerns, I'll leave my cards here. I'll be here for a little bit, and please hope you're in. Make sure you get your chicken biscuit, right? Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was delicious. But I've already had breakfast, so I'm only eating more, which is cool. All right. Later. Um, I have plenty. Uh, later. I can do some for later. Is that correct? Right? Sounds good. All right, guys. So just want to remind you one more time, guys. And I know we talk about this a lot. But guys, this this is what makes us different. Sets us apart. It's our belief system. And guys, I want to spend time with every single week because it's so important that we know why we believe this. And I'm going to do trust today. Trust starts with honesty, guys. As long as you're honest um, with yourself, number one, and with your clients, guys, and with other agents, that is what will set us apart because when honesty is not there, guys, trust goes away. And so I love this one, trust today. So guys, always, even if it hurts sometimes, tell the truth because the truth will do what? Set you free. Set you free. Is that right, guys? So I love this. Copier updates Monday, July the 26th. Cameron, um, tell me about this. Monday, all the copiers here in the office are going to be updated to a different company. So you're not going to be able to print from your personal computers until you download the new software. Um, we have an office here in the building. They are going to go around to each office and update it for you. And then Tuesday after team meeting, you can meet with the IT guys um, downstairs and they'll update it for you as well. And then afterwards, uh, they'll have guys that are accessible as well as Scott Hardy can help as well. But you will have to redo those.
And so, so are we also going to send this out via email? Mm -hmm. Guys, what's, what's going to happen? My phone will ring Sunday night at 9 o'clock. Jim, <laughs> I'm at the office. Yeah. I cannot copy something. I got to copy these contracts. Yeah. I go, well, you weren't team meeting. You didn't listen to your emails. I can't make it happen right now, guys. So anyway, I want to give them Kimberly's number, number and have them call Kimberly. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't want to do this. So anyway, guys, anyway, just pay attention. We're like, I'll this be on vacation. I want you to see this because I thought this was exceptional to show you the power of our southeast region. The stuff has multiple offers. Uh, Every day, guys, twenty five hundred in the region. Yeah, yeah. 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 What do you think? No. Can we have that? So are we the number it. one? Huh? Are we the number one region? We're the number one region in the country. Okay. When you travel um, to the parts, um, wherever, you know, like to Austin, or where are you from? Oh, I'm from the Wow. You are know, two with the Walls. Oh, we've heard about the Walls. You guys are, are great. great. Which we saw, oh, South Korea, y'all are the one in the country. So, guys, y'all are famous out there. So guys, I, this just speaks to it. And last year, number one in Metro Atlanta was Keller Williams for all the offices. $14.5 billion in sales. Number two was Berkshire Hathaway at $4 billion. So, four. 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 Number two is four. Number one is fourteen and a half billion. So guys, um, what you all do, you are amazing. And I hear other companies saying, Judge, you know, we're coming after you. We'll get started. So. <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring your A game. Hey, son, I'm going to take your A game. Um, I like the kind of channel. All right. Hey, guys, th this is something that, that, um, that um, they're doing for us that, that is a way to touch your, your clients. We just want to speak to this for a second. Yeah, this is this Saturday morning at 10 a.m. right down the street at Merchant's Walk. Um, we have the theater reserved. We have those three movies center play, which is uh, Black Widow, Baby Boss, and I can't read the one. Boss, baby, boss baby, and yeah, thank you. And uh, <laughs> Baby Boss, Boss Baby, whatever. Um, two, in case you have been waiting breathlessly for the sequel. Um, so if you guys, uh, again, if you need a flyer, let us know. We'll get you a, a co-branded co flyer, and you can invite your database. Uh, we'd love to have you there. Great. I'll also be letting all the agents know who all RSVP probably oh. Thursday. Like, I didn't know you just slipped in back there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, this is just a great way to get in touch with database and find the free movie on Saturday morning. And I promise you, this time of the year, if they can come and bring the children and sit in there for free, and they could be happy. I mean, my family in town is exactly who it could be. That's I did with you guys. It's cool. That's wonderful. That's great. All right. Um, you want to speak about this, Christy? Oh, yes. Um, school drive is still in process. If you haven't heard the message by now, shame on us. But um, we're raising, we're collecting school supplies because a lot of these teachers try to pay for this stuff on their own out of pocket, and it's just breaking the poor teachers. So um, we've got some elementary schools we're looking at. We're still waiting to hear back from the middle school, I believe. But 
you can go to Amazon and there's a wish list that we shared by email and you can just order it and it comes right here to the office. Those are just suggested items, but anything school supplies, y'all all know the kind of stuff we're looking for. Grab it, throw it in the boxes outside the chamber. And it's due by Wednesday the 28th to get to the school before school starts next week. Okay. I'm going to make an assumption, and this is one assumption. Everybody out there, please forgive me because this may be um, my misunderstanding of stuff, but most people in this office, they, they take their kids to the wherever you say, well, pick out what you want. One of those, two of those, three of those. Well, most of them don't have that. They go to school, they don't have pencils, they don't have anything. So, God, this is a way for us to give back. And Chris, we thank you for having me. Second, you're committed. God said, this is a way for us to do it. And I cannot wait to go to the dollar store, take about $100, and go spend, because you could buy a bunch of stuff for that. Oh, so much. I mean, so much should, all the stores have everything you get. We two for dollars. Happy we should all meet at this. <laughs> yeah, sure you go. Well, happy Seriously. hour is Dollar Tree. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But yeah. anything is appreciated. I don't care if you just bring one pack of pencils or you're cleaning out your desk, you bring all the pins that have logos from all the vendors you've met. We'll take it all. Just throw it in the boxes. We love it. Oh, it's a little very nice. So, yeah, great vendors, idea. if you yeah. change your logo, bring us all your pins. Show up on this whole all. Okay, yeah. We're going to show up. So, thank you all for your support. The teachers and students generally, they couldn't do it without you. Well, thank you. Thank you. And your committee for doing this. Um, feeling smart, trivia night. Talk about this also. Favorite day, Saturday, August 21st. Well, we miss getting together, and I think after the event at Tim Lizzie's with the great turnout that we had, we want to try to keep doing that. So, this is a trivia night, and vendor y'all invited too. Um, so we're gonna meet at Patty Jackson's house, and we'll send out more details soon. Um, but we're gonna have a trivia guy come in and have a trivia contest for a couple hours. So, when you RSVP, you can self select to be on a team with somebody if you want, or we'll put teams of four together. Um, we're going to have some beverages there, bring a chair, bring a blanket, whatever it is, and we're just going to have a little bit of fun. And it's um, you see, it's already August 21st, 7 to 10 p.m. We should be finished by 9.30 with trivia, but there you go. Question. Uh -huh. Yes. Bring drinks, bring food, bring... Uh, we're going to bring some drinks. We figured kind of people might want to drink things other than wine or beer, so right. feel free to bring anything else. But no, we're not asking the vendors to provide anything. Y'all just come because... Well, let's talk about that. I'm sorry. Let me give you your PSA. And this is, uh, I'm speaking for Chris Van Zandt right now. So last Wednesday night at Reformation in Woodstock, uh, Chris's team won out of 30 teams the trivia night there. Mm -hmm. uh, that happened to be Chris, Kevin, uh, Mason, me, and two of my kids. Wow. So, um, but Chris did most of the heavy lifting. So. <laughs> and Kevin and Mason. Yeah, Chris and Kevin are talking some smack, so we need some people out there to take them down. Are I'll you on there? I'll just tell you that if you want people to be on your team, you don't want me. <laughs> I'm all with that. I've met them all with that. And I lay up there to the first year. you. What did you just give me? I'm sheep that kind of stuff. I was, wow. And this is adults only, so we don't mean to not include the kids on this. Another thing we're working on for the fall. Jim, I heard one of the topics Hi guys. So, so think GPS is go global position satellite. That's not what that is. So I can really tell. It is your 135. For those of us who've been around for a little bit, it is your goals, your priorities. What does and GPS stand for? What? What does GPS stand for? Goals, priorities, and strategies. I like that. All right. Yeah. So it's your goals, your priorities. Visit that by showing you how to write a good GPS, and we're going to take a look at the 4112 because both of those are workable documents. The best thing my assistant ever did for me is print it out and put it on my desk every Monday morning. Like, oh, it's no longer tucked away on a computer or in a drawer somewhere. It's a working document. Gary Keller has one, my coach has one, right? So come learn how it's done. The first time I was in the classroom with GPS, I left, I was so confused. I'm gonna break it down and make it simple. And you will leave one or you should be updating the one you have now. 
So, oh, the general room, if it gets to the pat downstairs, then we come back up here, right? And so we're going to do it right after. Okay, fast track to cap. This is a program designed to have even cap quick and fast. So we're going to tweak it because what's happening in all of us? A huge global event. Beijing. And what else? The Olympics. <laughs> so this is what we're gonna have. We're gonna have PC Olympics. So come tomorrow at 12 between 12 30 and 1 30 to get all of the information. This is another tool to help us remain as the number one southeast region and the number one African South Zone. So we're always providing you items of value. And somebody and I that's in this room, I'm not gonna point her out that was at another office we had a long chat yesterday about the September Williams office and they're not creating equal and all of the things that we do here and the energy that's in this office that is devoid of other offices so guys and I know Jeff has told me that he's been around the block and that this office is exceptional right Jeff exceptional Exceptional. So come out, all of the opportunities, and pick your opportunities. You have options. So I can't wait to see you all tomorrow to find out about this program. I look at the numbers for the office regularly, which is what I love to do. I'm not a limit person, I'll say I'm not. Oh, there's one more thing? Yes. Oh, yeah, please talk about the Okay, uh, it's the Keller Williams Consumer App, and Patrick Morgan is the um, tech, the regional tech trainer. And he's super fabulous. He's the techie guy. He knows all this stuff like the back of his hand. So is he going to be in person? He's in person. Okay, we can talk about that. Absolutely. Um, Patrick is not only really smart and knows every single thing possible he can, he's also very personable. So mm -hmm. don't think just because it's a tech class that you're going to be bored or not understand it he's a great instructor <coughs> trainer that's why he's the regional tech trainer yeah so um we're lucky that he's coming to our office out of all of the southeast offices that he's responsible for um so come and learn it's going to be strategy about the app not just click by click setting it up but that will be covered as well but he's going to talk about how to use it to get more business mm -hmm. how do you do it in this room yes oh, here. Okay. All right. Well, there's just so much going on out there right now, guys. I mean, there's so many good things. Please, please plug in. Um, it, it's um, mm -hmm. um, there's so many good opportunities way for you to grow your business. If you're sitting at home, um, and and more than doing just a mobile in your car, throwing your puppy with that guy. There's so much great ways you can you can um, do well. And and guys, <laughs> between now and the end of this year, someone's gonna make a lot of money. Someone's gonna make a lot of money. Um, and why not you? And if you think, which am I? Hello. Yeah, me too. You're on. <laughs> and so, guys, um, just just realize that between now and the end of the year, if you want to make a bunch, bunch of money, you got to plan it. It's like going to Cal from here to California. You just say, well, I get in my car and I'll just start driving. And you may get to one of these days. So, guys, mm -hmm. let's plan that. All right, come in your opportunities. Talk about Carrie Qualtrics. Yeah. You want to talk about that, Carrie? Sure. Um... You need to know how to do opportunities to get paid. <laughs> yeah, so it's important to um, learn them if you haven't already. And also, we'll talk about using opportunities to track your pipeline and make sure you're following up with your leads and prospects like you should. So, 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 um, can I ask you to put you on the spot? Who is George Shet? You, you, you'll figure out the right answer. So, so, can I hear once in a while? Oh, Jim, command just does nothing, it just doesn't work. It's a waste of my time. I'm disappointed that you hear it. How would you respond to that to that statement? <clears throat> um, besides your blood, blood boiling, besides that, <laughs> oh, you're fine. Uh, Command is an awesome product. Yeah. If you can get into it and just use contacts and opportunities, which have been working seamlessly for a couple of years now, um, you don't have to go and play with all the added features that are on the fringes that sometimes goof up. Um, and I'll tell you when those are ready to, to dive into in our, in our flawless. So it works and works well. It? it works and works well for what you need to do for your business. For the price. It is the software that you get for the, for the technology fee is unparalleled. 
Yes. I take that from you. Mortgage one on one, taught by Jeff Hart. Yes. You're going to be teaching that July 28th. And even if you've got, um, you've been around for a while and you think, oh, I know everything, it's still a good opportunity because there may be some things you don't know. So I'd love to have everybody come. Oh, cool, guys. That's great. Jeff, I'm sure it'll be a, a great class. Command on um, happy hour with Kevin Jackson, guys. He does a lot. Thank you, Kevin, for doing that. Um, and it is now going to be on Thursday, July the 29th from 5 to 6 p.m. So check your emails for a Zoom link, guys. And this is a this is a place you can go where it's safe. Kevin has no judgment. He'll just say, well, here's how we do this. Now, this is a safe place to go if you if you want to ask some really silly questions about um about commandments. So please go there. It matters who you're in business with. Contract <laughs> mastermind, special stipulations. Can we talk about Michelle Byers and Sherry Rispy, our two amazing uh, uh, brokers here. And so guys, just be there. Um, 11 to 2. Um, no, 11 to 12. 11 to 12. I can't even read it. <laughs> um, I don't have my glasses on. That July time, so. And it's on Friday, July 30th. So please join them then. You want to say anything about it, Michelle? Just that we continue to struggle with contracts, and this gets deeper. Um, I always tell you to read your contract, but this is a communication where we're talking about it and what's hanging people up. The exciting thing is we're going to do special steps, um, so things that you can, will help you move quickly as you prepare contracts or as you review contracts if you're the listing agent. So please join us. We usually have about 30 people, 30 smart people. And uh, we want to include you too. Great, great. We love that. Um, um, do you want to talk about Ignite also? Ignite is coming up starting August 2nd. We'll go through 12 sessions with some amazing um, agents that, go, that have volunteered to teach. We've got a, a great group of new, um, of new agents, but you don't have to be new. If you've already taken Ignite and you want to restart your business, please do so. Um, you can get 33 credit hours for your CE. Wow, you can wipe out a whole lot real quickly. So Kimberly has sent out a link. And you all, I'm broken record. This doesn't exist out there. Mm -hmm. this, this, you won't get this kind of people teaching you out there at other offices, mm -hmm. at, frankly, any board of realtors. God, this, this is an exceptional group, and they all teach this at the highest level. So. Um, this is, in fact, we'll call them our faculty. How about that? Faculty. This is mm -hmm. our faculty guys, and mm -hmm. they are amazing. They're some of the best of the best guys. So please show up for this. Um, if you want to just jump on one of the classes, you can do that, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, guys, Mega Camp is coming up. Um, and <laughs> when I came here 10 years ago um, and thought, Jim, you left Harry Norman. You're at a great place. The president loves you. You were close friends. You lost your mind. I can't tell the rest. You just kind of lost your mind. And, um, and the first time I went to Mega Camp that fall, I went, wow, now I get why I'm here. And again, there's nothing like that. If you've never heard Gary Keller, he is Steve Jobs for Real Estate. He is amazing. And guys, there's so much going on. And it, you can do it as cheaply this year as ever because it's going to be um, 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 live streamed um, for you um, on your computer. Is it a Zoom or is it a live stream? Which one is it? Uh, uh, live stream. Live stream. Live stream. Right. So guys, it'll be like you're there on the front row. And I tell you what, the breakout sessions is it, is it are worth it. And what's the cost? I forgot. 119. 119. 119. And the breakout sessions, I went through them yesterday for yeah. just looking for agents. I, I've never seen such great topics that are so pertinent for today. Great. And our own Courtney Newton is going to be on one of the panels. And so she's on, I think, on Friday afternoon. So, guys, if, if you have not signed up for this, um, please sign up for this because it's going to be fantastic. I signed up for it. Um, I cannot wait um, you know, to, to hear what's going to go on this year. So, guys, for $119, it is well worth the cost. So, please do that. And they're, they're going to get rid of the, of the site soon. You're not going to cost you more to sign up. So, sign up as soon as possible. Michelle. Okay. Lessons learned. Lots and lots and lots of lessons to learn, but I have to keep it at a very small thing. So, we continue. <laughs> Um, to have a problem with our all cash. And we've had um, some agents that say, oh, just write it, um, you know, and, and don't worry about really proving that they have funds. Not good. I did, I did three um, earnest money letters because we had, um, we had clients that failed to 
um, do what they were supposed to do. So how many of you work with investors? Okay, if you do, be wary of this form. And I want you to read this form to them because it says at the top, it says while buyers have, while buyer has sufficient liquid assets mm -hmm. to purchase the property in this transaction for all cash. So what does that mean? They have, money. They have the money. They, have the money. Uh, they, they either can or, or, or are not um, eligible to go for a hard money loan. Mm -hmm. um, our agents as many agents are falling um, in the trap that they're getting these letters from hard money lenders saying that they'll lend a certain amount. That is not money. That is, that is a loan. And so you need to read down below in 2A, it says a letter or letters from trust, stock brokerage firms, and or financial institution holding funds, stocks, bonds, and or other assets. So does that go along with a hard money lender saying that they can get up to a certain amount? With documentation. Well, with no. Documented it, proof. Well, I mean, they can if, if the contract allows them to seek alternative financing, they can do that. And as long as they close, all is cool. But they needed to have the money to start with. Now, there, there is that disagreement that some people go, well, they're savvy investors. I'm telling you, they're not happy when they're losing their earnest money. And I had someone say that they were going to send an attorney to, to, to me because they, they didn't do it correctly. So please make sure, because what's different about the all cash sale that's not in a, any other type of loan document? There's no financing contingency. Now there is an appraisal contingency if you mark that, but there's no financing contingency. So does that mean that if they get turned down, they can just give a letter and get their earnest money back? It does not. So please understand this and understand that if you're the listing agent, that if someone presents it, it should be from 2A, that it's actually liquid assets. And if they went today, despite the property, that they could pull that money. Okay. And Michelle, Michelle, can you talk about um, uh, Homeward, please? Because they are selling it as cash and it is not cash. I'm, I'm not prepared to talk about Homeward today. So we can uh, later um, be happy to do that. Okay. Homeward is that? What's that? What form? What form? The all cash exhibit is F401. Read it carefully. Read it to your clients. Make them understand that a hard money second is not cash. It is absolutely not cash. But they can do it if they have the cash. So play liars poker. That's your. Michelle, y'all seeing a lot of stuff with ribbon. <clears throat> uh, do you know? I mean, do you know what no, it is? No, I don't. Nobody in here knows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Me too. Jeff. I mean, it's a, it's an entity that's got a couple hundred million dollars, and basically, their, your client connects with them, and they're going in and doing their own valuation of the property, and they're guaranteeing that they will win, they will, fund up to that amount, and if the house appraises for more than that, they're actually on the hook for the difference, which is kind of interesting. But what they're doing is like, if your client, for example, still gets financing from us or whatever, I think it's a 1% or 1.5% and fee. And then if they actually can't get financing and Ribbon buys it, then they have to owe them like a 2.5% fee and then they'll sell it to them at mm -hmm. a set price well, later. And, and, and I don't know anything about it, but you do have to be careful about an assignment. No, no, there's no assignment. There's no assignment. There's no assignment. It's like uh -huh. home. Right. Okay. Yeah. They buy it's, it's interesting. It's yeah. legit. Oh, okay. I mean, okay. So, legit. But yeah. if, if it was written yeah. in mm -hmm. the buyers and then they're going to have ribbon do it, you've got to do it. No, it's not that. It's, it's not yeah, that. There's a contract yeah. addendum. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, great. All right. Don't ask me these questions. I don't know. I'm <laughs> sorry. I was just bringing it up. I'm sure. Anyway, the last thing I want to tell you is be careful if you're doing condos. 
that you do know if you're the listing agent, you've got for the buyer to get financing if they're paying, if they're not paying cash, a condo questionnaire has to be filled out. Um, Jeff, you want to you share? You call me Reed. I'm Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know, I, I, I'm gonna call you Rambo. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah, but you tell me to put him on the bad list. So I'm calling him on the bad list. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Condos next week. Yeah. Oh, buyer needs. Okay. You told me to move on. Okay. Buyer needs. Oh. All right. Who's got some buyer needs? I do. Any $200,000, $250,000 listings I have, wherever you have them, just call me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can buy my house in Virginia, but I have a plug. No. Okay. In, 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 Georgia. in Georgia. In Georgia, just call me. That, okay. I mean, that, that's it. Like two, between two to two fifty. Just call me. Okay. Well, yeah. let me just tell you this. Yes. Yeah. There were. 482 homes that came back on the market. Be watching it in the last in the last seven days, and there were 2,159 new listings. So there is a line at the end of the tunnel. Yes. Okay. Who else has fires? I do. This is Patty Jackson. Hello. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, we have we have several buyers right now. We have um, a couple um, buyers for East Cobb, and they are starting at three hundred up to five hundred between the two of them, and they're just both first time home buyers, just looking for the best house for the money. Um, they're not school specific or anything. Well, one of them is, is more interested in a house that they can eventually rent out. So they would, they would like it to be in, you know, what she considers the desirable schools. Um, and, um, so she said Pope, Walton, Lassiter, um, but I think they're looking at, at, you know, at any school at this point. Um, we have a buyer for Alpharetta, Johns Creek, Roswell, up to from like uh, 450 to 550. And um, they don't really have any, they're just looking for a good house. They don't really have any specific needs at all. Um, <clears throat> and then um, we have a new buyer that's looking just all over. They're, they're basically, they can go up to Kennesaw, um, Ackworth. I don't want to go as far as Canton, but they are pretty much looking anything from here all the way up to, you know, all the way up north. So we looked at one at yesterday at, um, uh, oh gosh, I forgot the name of the neighborhood now. Big, huge neighborhood that's in, in North Cobb. Um, and they are from three to 400. And let's see. And then I have one more, we have another one that is looking in the, in Smyrna Vinings area and, um, and Mableton, and they are three to 400. So um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Who else? If not, we'll move on to the next one. coming on this weekend it's in it's a four bedroom four and a half bath home it's um was built in 2018 it has all hard can you hear me <laughs> <laughs> oh well never mind i'll put it in the notes <laughs> huge master suite and the secondary rooms are to live for they are huge and there it's at the end of a cul-de-sac it is in sprayberry school district there are three pickup points for Wheeler Magnet Program for that specific neighborhood. We're going to list it at 480. Right. Right. Liz. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Heather, you on? No. Uh, I, I, I was going to speak for Heather because I think I know which one she 
is wanting to tell you guys about. She has an all cash buyer looking at the Woodstock area, wants to be close to downtown. They need at least three bedrooms and over 2,000 square feet. Uh, for the right house, they're willing to go up to $700,000 and want to be, again, close to downtown Woodstock. Okay, thank you, Penny. You're welcome. All right, let's go. In that same um, neighborhood that Offering is getting ready to list, we are listing as well. It'll be live Thursday. It's a three-bedroom ranch. We're going to list it for 400. It's granted. I mean, it's, it's sweet. Three, two and a half. I've got something coming up in Kennesaw, Westover Crossing this weekend, and I've got Chimney Springs on the lake, Back Lake, Pond Lane, six and a quarter. Gorgeous. All going live Thursday, Friday. Fantastic. All right. Anybody else? Anybody in TV? Hey, this is Kathy Radler. Okay. Hey, I have a listing coming in uh, Fox Hills. It's a contemporary and it will be going live on Thursday at 475. It's a, a potentially five bedroom uh, home in Fox Hills. Okay, all right, thank you. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. All right, Jim, take back over. So uh, one, one of the things that you all asked about a couple months ago was that you wanted to know what buyer agents are doing these days to prepare their the clients um, for this market. And as you know, the market has continued to evolve. Um, I, I, I heard this week that, that some people are able to go out and to get their clients a house without doing all the stuff that they did before. Maybe not even have to give away the whole farm. And so I've asked Jennifer, who works a lot with buyers, and the court and team to come in and talk about what she does to get them ready and how she sees the market. So Jennifer, come on, she got to be out there by uh, 35 minutes and she's going to close it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I see some familiar faces. Um, I'm Jennifer. I have been a buyer's agent for the past five years on Courtney Newton's team. And I'm sure that if you know that name, Courtney Newton, you know that I've learned a lot in, a, in five years. Okay. Um, and I want to start by saying it's interesting because I recently just re transitioned by taking two listings. And being on the other side has really given me like this greater appreciation for being a buyer's agent. Okay. Um, and what's really important, and I mean, it all comes down to, I think, the culture that we're learning here in this office. Um, it really is communication, knowing your contract, knowing how to fill it out. Um, I mean, in reviewing one offer and going through and I'm like, oh yes, you know, this much over list. And I'm like, well, hold on a second, they didn't fill out the due diligence. <laughs> like, you know, just simple things. So getting back to the basics. And I think that um, when it comes to being a buyer's agent, creating clarity is number one. Okay, who who is working buyers in here? Okay, um, with my consultation, I have done it over and over and over and over again to the point where I could probably do it in my sleep. Um, we have a packet, and I'm, is it cool if I use the flip chart? Then? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Um, because there are a couple of things that, I mean, we know that our buyers are all over the place. They're nervous with even getting in the market. Am I going to be able to find something? Um, how much money am I going to be spending? I only have this much. And in my buyer communication, my packet consists of tons of information. Um, but I feel like my most important piece is the money flow worksheet. Okay, so I'm going to outline that here, feel free, um, take notes, ask questions. Um, I'm really, you know, just going with the flow here. So um, the money flow worksheet, what I'm starting with is of course, the sales price. Now, you want to naturally have your clients already pre-approved, right? Yep. We want the letter in hand, we want to know not only are they pre-approved, but are you comfortable with that monthly mortgage? Because it could be very exciting that someone's approved for five hundred thousand dollars, but are you willing to take on that mortgage and be comfortable with your with your daily living? Is it going to be 
you know, in line with the budget that you have now. Okay. And pre-approved so. means what? Does that mean they don't go through the underwriting? What does that mean it's in your world? Well, in my world, what I want to do is, I think that's a good question. There is a story I want to come back to that. Good. Um, so I had a client who was a past client and I had already helped her once to purchase a, uh, a townhouse. And she's like, Jennifer, I'm ready to buy a single family house, one a backyard, the whole thing. Cool. Well, she's um, a veteran and she didn't realize that our preferred lender does VA loans. So she goes to another company that you know, is specifically working with them. And they take a look at her and <laughs> they you know, take the bird's eye view and they're like, you're awesome, you're ready to go. Here's your letter for 300,000. Well, we're out, we're in the market, we're looking at homes and lo and behold, I said, you know, it just, it's, it's weighing on me and I wanna have a talk with you about this. I said, is there any reason why you didn't speak to our preferred lender? And she said, well, I didn't know that they did VA loans. I said, okay. I said, well, I think, when I saw your letter, I think I can get you a better interest rate with this preferred lender. She said, okay, I'll go ahead and talk with that. Turns out, after the preferred lender looked at her a little bit closer, she actually had a sale contingency. Okay, here we are in the market, pounding the pavement, making offers, going over lists, willing to cover gaps. She has to sell a house first. She has two rental properties. Was it ever even a discussion with the first lender? No. So, number one, get your get your preferred lender to get eyes on your client, even if they come to you with a letter, even maybe maybe by a company that you know, because I knew the company, but I was given like she's golden, thumbs up. No, yeah, she's golden if she sells a house first. Mm -hmm. So, number one, get them you know looked at by your preferred guys. Um, so, going back to Jim's question. They are providing, you know, W-2s, bank statements. They're filling out the credit application. They're having their credit ran. Now, depending on the lender, I mean, you can go ahead and start the underwriting process, but I at least want to know that you have looked at everything, not just from the bird's eye view, okay? I'm not just, you know, they're not just running credit and okay, you got a, you know, 740 credit score, you're good to go. And you got this much money in the bank. So going back to the sales price, and we'll just, you know, base it off at 300000 Okay, so what is important for a seller to know, or excuse me, a buyer to know when they're purchasing a house? What are some what are some important things when it comes to the financing? Yes, Liz. There's going to be some money needed. Uh -huh. There's going to be down payment. There's going to be yeah, money needed for down payment, closing costs, inspections. Yeah, potentially appraisal. Right. right. Yep. There's there's okay. expenses moving. Exactly. Right. They can't Earn money. No money. What does that look like? So I'm just going to abbreviate. And what I want to do is um, also welcome you guys to, if this is something you want me to go into and I'll, I'll do like a full on consultation, call me, email me, text me, let me know. I can get together a little brief if you want to dig in with this a little bit more because this has taken a little while for me to like really truly be able to just rattle off so fluidly and answer any questions that pop up that I understand if you're new in the business, this is kind of a foreign language. Okay. So with I, I truly you know all depending on their loan product, I get into down payments, but I let my client know right off the bat, I do not dig into your finances. Okay. It is not my business. What my business is is that I'm going to go through this worksheet and when I give you a total down here, and I say, is this comfortable for you? If you're hesitating, then we are not getting in the car. Mm -hmm. We're not. Because I need for you to be comfortable and understanding how much money you're about to spend. I have clients right now that would love to use their down payment assistance programs. I let them know, listen, you need to at least go the FHA route, not down payment assistance. If you truly want the house. Okay, and that'll bring out the pressure point on people if they're not able to financially afford that, then we need to we need to maybe wait a little bit. Okay, because this is the market that is, um, it, it, I mean, I think that everybody's using the word challenging. 
And I think that if we can shift that word challenging and just understand that all we have to do is just explain a little bit better, we can take that word out of our vocabulary. We can better prepare our client in, in providing the clarity. Because if you go through this, they're gonna know just like my own. Like she's, you know, I'm hiring her for a reason and it's starting here. I'm proving my worth in this consultation. Okay. So when it comes to down payment, again, I let them know I'm not digging into their financing. If if they are, you know, doing five percent down, whatever, I'll just calculate that. Okay. Um, and put that here. If they're choosing to do a little bit more, a little bit less, whatever the loan product is, put the down payment here. Okay. Closing costs. Now I know Reed being in the room, um, my my preferred lender, we have this formula that we use, and you can you can tell me if this is something that you feel good about. Um, we take the sales price, multiply it by the one percent, which is typically a loan origination fee, and then we're adding the prepaid, which could be anywhere from thirty five hundred to forty five hundred. Okay. So we'll just say for the sake of it, four thousand dollars. So from three hundred thousand, three hundred thousand times one percent, three thousand dollars plus four thousand dollars, seven thousand dollars approximately for closing costs. Okay. So again, I mean, if that's this is just a an equation that I use, and I let them know that listen, I could be off. I'm not a lender. But I do want to be prepared. And if I'm going to err on the side of caution and give you a little bit larger of a number to be prepared for, I'm okay with that. Okay, because anything can happen. So if we're taking that equation, I'm filling in $7,000. And that's something I want you to be prepared for. There's my alarm. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, you're getting older. <laughs> Not to start with you. Um, okay, so seven thousand dollars earnest money. If we're looking at a sales price of three hundred thousand, markets passed, we could have gotten away with three thousand dollars. Right now, we're seeing people wanting at least six thousand dollars if we're purchasing three hundred because they want skin in the game. They want to know that you want you're putting down a little bit more that you're just not going to willy nilly walk away from. It's maybe a little bit easier for some folks to walk away from three thousand, but six thousand it's a little bit harder, right? So setting that expectation, six thousand dollars. And you show them at this time or later that how they can lose their six thousand dollars. Yes. Good. So at this point, I say, okay, earnest money. This is a spin in the game. It's in play for two reasons, in my opinion. It's letting you, it's letting the seller know how much you really want that house, and it's also there in the event that you default on the contract. The seller can keep this money. Okay. And they might stiffen up a little bit. Like, what do you mean? Default. Oh. Default, yes, it's possible. You're hiring me for a reason. You're hiring me to protect you. You have three protected periods in your contract. Okay, that's your due diligence, that's your financing, and that's your appraisal. Okay, so this money does remain a part of the contract. You will have this show up to you at closing as a credit. To you, you put down the six thousand, so you'll you'll see this show up to you on your on your settlement statement as a credit. Okay. Now comes the inspection and the appraisal. So inspection, all depending. Obviously, we know that it's all based on square footage. If we're looking at a three hundred thousand dollar home, we're probably going to gauge it being. You know, roughly 2,500 square feet or less. Okay. So at that point, we'll just go ahead and say your inspection is going to be $500. Then your appraisal, another $500. Is this all clear for everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we're doing here is, is we're setting the expectation. We got the closing costs, and I'm not even in discussion. Whereas markets pass, I could say we can manipulate this number. Yeah. We can ask for money, not this market. I don't even bring it up. 
Yeah. People ask some, some, you know, of course, they're like, oh, I thought I heard her. Right. Mm -hmm. not, not this much yet. And I think that it's, it's super important for them to, because they're going to, they may, they may pretend like, oh, that's easy. You know, I can do this. But inside, they're kind of like freaking out. They're like, oh my God, I didn't want to listen to this much. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think you, and I'm sure you're, you guys wouldn't be using a lender that what didn't do this, but I, I would imagine when your client hears one of you is saying the same thing that the other one did, and they're hearing the same set of numbers or something close mm -hmm. and all those things, then that's hugely important. I don't think that a lot of realtors do what you're doing. And I guess as long as you got a good lender. Yeah, I do. I know you did. I mean, I knew you did. Yeah. I wasn't, wasn't lying. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I think that, I mean, you're right. And I think it's important for everybody to have a really good lender. I think it's important for everybody to have two or three really good lenders. Okay, let me be very clear on that because where one person can do something, you know, a little bit more creative, the other cannot. And I let them know, like Bank of America, they're only quoting you. Their, their, you know, their uh, interest rate for the day, they're only quoting you their loan product. Whereas somebody who can be a little bit more flexible can shop a loan product for you to get you a better deal. Okay. And I always go into that saying that all lenders are not created equal. And that and, and, and that story that I told you about the lady who had the contingency, that is, I mean, it drove it home after I had that conversation with her because that was a very hard conversation. Because guess what? That day she found a house for dreams. Of course she did. <laughs> And, you know, thankfully, I had a relationship with her. I mean, not just the relationship of, you know, this trans uh, transaction, but a previous transaction and a previous client of Courtney's for years. So, you know, there was that, guys, you're always looking out for me. This is why I use your team every single time. It drove it home. I mean, it was kind of like this very bittersweet moment. But it's because it's important for you to have systems in place. I mean, it's 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 huge. And and when I finally got this down, I mean, it looks much prettier printed, and you know, in my folder. But when you when you're able to really dig in and show them these numbers, again, you're setting the expectation of your professionalism. You're setting expectations for them and their finances <clears throat> and what to experience. Throughout the entire transaction, because if you're shutting off on this, but they know she's got my back, right? Yes, ma'am. I want to interject that I love that you're not really specifying rate. You're saying overall cost because yes. rate and cost, you know, they tie up hand in hand. But you know, you can't do one without the other. But it's going to change every day. It might change twice. Yes. So you're really focused on this is the outline. Yes. Which is great. You're staying in your lane. Uh huh. But you're sharing information. I learned that very, yeah. very early. Do not. I mean, because, and, and, and there was probably consultations where I, well, I teetered a line. Mm -hmm. um, I say a rough estimate of approximately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is huge. You are not a lender expert. You are a real estate expert. <laughs> Leave that to them. Because, you know, you've got enough going on in your world. Okay. So and switching gears, because this is, this is important, setting the tone. Um, over the weekend, Baker Station and Appworth. We're saying the market schooling didn't feel it on that one. <laughs> 20 offers. Okay. 225. Now, also, too, I want to, I mean, I, I really had to go in because it was an FHA purchaser. And in the listing, it says not FHA approved. Well, it's two separate communities, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm texting Courtney. I'm looking at the tax records. I'm do your own research. <laughs> do not let that listing agent. And I'm sorry, listing agents. I love y'all. Sometimes we're just a little bit happy, and you know, I, just when you're focused on your buyer and you're focused on your offer, make sure that you are going through. And because I outlined to that agent, listen. 
These are the reasons why I believe your community is FHA approved. FHA approval now allows buyers to come out of pocket on a balance of a, an appraisal gap. Like I was spitting my knowledge to her, letting her know not only is our offer awesome, but I'm educated and I'm, and I'm able to navigate this process so that you don't have any worries about my partnership and co-op with you. Didn't win the bid. However, you know, I didn't let that no take, take control. Submit the offer anyway. You never know. And my immediate response after getting the, the sorry, thanks so much for your hard work email. Mm -hmm. Do you have a backup? Did you already accept one? There's a girl on our team, thank you, Crown, um, that has won several offers with backups. We know that buyers are emotional, things are taking place, someone changes their mind. Be a backup. There's nothing wrong with being a backup. That is a good place to be. You're still out shopping, but you still have your option. You know, you, you put the backup in, but you still have options. So well, I've heard that if your clients can spend 300, that you probably need some house in the 250 range. So true? I think that there, I think that there's a strategy to that. Absolutely. Um, after going through this, and explaining, hey, listen, if you're if we're shopping at you know 300, and maybe you were approved for 315, and we go over, and you're willing to cover a, an appraisal gap up to seven thousand dollars, not to exceed, and you're comfortable with that budget and coming out of pocket, then sure, we can. Mm -hmm. We want to go through all those little scenarios, and just make sure because yes, if they're approved up to 300. Look for a house at 250. Sure, nothing's stopping them. But at the same time, if they're comfortable financially, stopping at 300, and if they're approved just a little bit more, run scenarios. And that's something that you can ask the lender to, uh, to do as well. Run the fee sheet, see how much it alters. The fee sheets are huge. I mean, when you're, when you're in the consultation with the buyer, I'm a high eye, if you can't tell. Um, but, you know, I've worked with C's. I've worked with, you know, people who are like laser focused on the details. Those are the people you get fee sheets for. And you should be getting fee sheets for everybody. But, you know, make sure that they're comfortable. You, I'm here to facilitate. This is not about me. This is about my client and what they're most comfortable with. But there is strategy to that. You're probably in a little bit bigger of a buyer pool with 250 purchasers. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe you're also going up against folks who are capped out at 250 and you're capped out at 300, so you have some flexibility. Um, Jennifer, I've got, I've got one particular realtor that will, she asks the same question every time. She'll say, okay, how much cash do they have? Yeah. And she'll always take the pre approved amount and back it down right now. I mean, she didn't do it until this year, yeah. but she does exactly. And she says, okay, then we need to go in at so and so because we're probably going to have to bid over. I'm like, and that that gives us as the loan officer, I'm sure Kendra said, oh like, such oh. a comfort because oh, yeah. we're both on the same page. Yes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you have to be on the same page. This is your partner. <laughs> they are getting you through. I mean, I, I mean, this is like a, a relay race. You're hustling, you've been running, you've been finding them houses, you've been negotiating contracts, you've been you know, manipulating numbers until your head's about to explode. And now, once you got them under contract, now it's the time to go ahead and pass the baton. That's when you let Reed take over and, and, and now do all the hard work. You're still you know, negotiating and potentially doing some repairs. But you know, for the most part, I mean, the partnership is huge. Huge. Uh, one thing I do want to um, suggest, Baker Station, for example, 20 offers. That was, I mean, for cooling market, a lot of offers. So guess what? We're going to go ahead and call through that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Did you know, owner, mm -hmm. that the house just right down the street had 20 offers? Have you considered selling your house? Mm -hmm. We have ready, willing, and able buyers. That have deemed your neighborhood as desirable. Script. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Mm -hmm. Guys, 
when I first saw on Fort News team, there was this this um, lady, this family who was like, we need to be in this school district, preferably this neighborhood. The second call I made, now of course it's very different work if I years ago. Um, the people who answered the phone, they were like, yep, we're moving to a retirement community. What? You're, you're moving? Can I, can I come look at your house? Do you have a realtor? Like what's going on? Give me the details. Her, you know, almost 90 years old. She was like, yeah, just come look at the house. Looked at the house, boom. Two transactions. So the top three things that you think work in your favor the best to win a bid going up against 20, 20 other loans. What, 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 what do you recommend to your client to be in order to be one wins? You know, they, they get ready to, to, um, to, to um, I think, get their love letters. Um, I've, I've already, because that's a fine line, and I'm not, I work very hard to get my real estate license. I'm not about to lose it. Period. The top three things that you think you should do in order to win, win the bid. Okay, great question. So obviously it's meant one hell of an offer. <laughs> um, knowing knowing exactly what your client could do, you've already gone through this. Because once you're going through this at the beginning, once you find the house that you like, now you can just discuss it. You know, you can pop through all these things and just know right off the top of their heads, okay, this is what I'm willing to do. Because there's gonna be some houses where they're like, no, I would like to live here, okay? And then there's going to be a house that they're like, all oh, my chips are in the middle of the table. Jennifer, show up and make it happen. Mm -hmm. All right. So clean contract. It's me calling the listing agent. Hey, what's important to your seller outside of these guys? Okay. Do they need temporary occupancy? Do you have a preferred closing attorney? Do you have a preference on what you're saying in earnest money? What is the number it will take? I, I, I don't mind asking those uncomfortable questions. I know that there are some realtors out there that just are like, oh my gosh, that you would ask that? Why not? I mean, they're going to tell me no or they're going to give me the answer I'm asking. So why not ask? Uh, because I'm also understanding that if I'm not doing that, then I'm doing a disservice to my client. Number two, um, I am, when I'm presenting my email, as we know, the normal conversation is one PDF it does make things a lot easier. Um, but I'm also doing a quick snapshot of what the offer is in the body of the email. Offer price, mm -hmm. you, you know, earnest money, closing date. The summary. The summary. Just a snapshot of it. See snapshot below. So again, because I want them to understand going in who they're working with. You know, not only do I have an awesome buyer, but I'm also going to be in full, you know, engagement, control of the contract. I want to make this as easy and smooth for you as possible. Okay. Um, and number three would be, um, I mean, I'm going to have my lender call. Or at least email. Right now, what we do have is a, um, along with their pre-approval letter, uh, they also send like this checklist noting all the documents. You know, this document has been received, this document has been received. Mm -hmm. So it's not just saying, here's a letter, but this is what they've done. This is what's already been received from the buyer, which I thought was kind of cool. Because it drives home, we're not just a bird's eye view on, on approval. One more question. I'm going to put the question out here, okay? What made you pick of the 20 offers? What made you pick the one you picked on, on the one that's been ready at 20 offers? Oh, I wish I had the 20 offers. It was me submitting the offer. Oh, I thought um, she would have done No, but no. It, so I, I didn't have 20 offers on um, my first or my first two listings. I did have to pick, you know, a couple to choose from. Um, it really is me calling the lender. I'm calling on a Saturday naturally and pretty impressive when I can hear kids screaming in the background. I know he's at the pool, but he's answering his phone. I like that, number one. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, if I'm taking um, a look at all the offers collectively, who put the most effort? I mean, 
the, the one offer that didn't go on their due diligence, they were the highest offer, but it made me nervous. This woman's, you know, real estate number showed it's a one. I said, but it's a one. Like, this should be just like fluid, you know, like you do it in your sleep. Why didn't you go on the due diligence? Are you doing the right to request repairs? Are you for forfeiting the due diligence? So, you know, when you're when you're doing it, go back and double check. I know that I have an issue with, uh, you know, reversing numbers. So I always go back and check just to make sure that I've done and filled it out properly. But it's always a good idea. It's just best practice. Have I filled out everything? Because there's sometimes, oops, I forgot to fill up for Sorry. Oops, I forgot to fill up the yeah, fill out the order of the air sign. We lost. You got a closing at 11. Any questions from online or any questions in the room? <clears throat> Nobody, not all at once. You know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not asking you a question, but I am telling you that you do an amazing job, obviously, in your consultation, because I never see her contracts come across my desk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I I think that that's what I love about it. Is that you know, when I committed to being a buyer's agent, I love the intimacy of the um, of the experience with the buyer. Um, I came from luxury retail before real estate, so I was used to having consultations, asking questions, and why is that important, you know, and so it was just an easy shoe for me to put on, um, but I, I very much enjoy what I do, and, and it was, you know, I, I had a lot to prove when I joined Courtney's team. She already had a very established team, and here I am, the newbie, you know, I'm cold calling, I'm hearing you know, all the other people pounding the phones in the office. I knew that I wanted to be the best buyer's agent on her team. Okay. And that was honing my craft. And it was, how can I stand out? Because I know that another buyer is going to possibly meet with another agent. What am I going to do differently that is going to stand out and, and prove to them that I'm the one you want to work with? I mean, it's, just the level of commitment. And, you know, I think that when, when you finish working with a client, it's like, you know, okay, now we're not realtor client anymore. Now we're forever friends. And, you know, they now have that confidence that there's some people, we have such a culture of lead follow-up and, and lead generation. There's some people that I've never even met that I've spoke to for three, four years, checking in, do you have any real estate meeting goals? Okay, we need to know that does. I get referrals to people I've never even met. It's just making a commitment to whatever level, you know, making that decision. There was a YouTube video that I was watching the other day, and it says it's easier to commit 100% than 98%. I was like, hold on a second. What? Like, how is it easier? 98%, you got to think about it. 100%, Michael Jordan said, if I make a decision, it's done. I never think about it again. So what level are you, you know, putting yourself at and not thinking about it anymore, honing your craft and being the best realtor you can to your clients? Or anybody out there that's on the call or uh, anybody in this room that is, knows anything different about the, the, the buyer's market right now? Anybody see anything different out there? Liz, come on, we'll pick on you because you're sitting here. You've been, you've been doing it for a couple of years. Anything different? I would say that from the difference of, let's say, two months ago mm -hmm. to right now, and we've all said this, buyers have a shot. Mm -hmm. They don't FHA have to be. buyers have a shot. Yeah. <laughs> what, say it again? FHA buyers right. have a shot. I mean, they do. Right. And that's a big difference. But before it was 20% down, you're going to pay over list, you're going to waive your appraisal, you're going to buy it as is, you'll let the seller stay for free for two months. I mean, yeah. it went on and on. It's not like that anymore. Yeah. And I think that there's some beauty in, in, in them saying it's enough, enough is enough, you know, because what goes up must come down. We've got to find a little bit of an ebb and flow of, of where we are. And, you know, and it goes to show that if buyers are putting their foot down, guess who's advising them? Us. Uh, mm -hmm. We have to learn, you know, when something like this happens, I mean, there's people that have been in the market 20 plus years and they've never experienced a market like this. But, you know, it was interesting because there was someone who came into our office and uh, was presenting a vendor opportunity. And it was similar to um, um, Orchard, no, Griffin. Griffin. 
um, where you can be a cash buyer. We'll turn you from conventional to cash. Awesome opportunity. And he said, you know, I've had a new agent who's been successful with closing this many transactions with us. And it was like that aha moment that she's a new agent. She doesn't know any different. Mm -hmm. Some of us are seasoned. Like we have to kind of relearn things. We have to think things about, you know, think about things differently because we're so used to going like this or, you know, it, it, however our normal mode is. But, you know, one, one criteria of being a realtor is learning how to bob and leave. You know, and for us to figure out what is going to work for us, but more importantly, what's going to work for our client. And the moment that we're able to see see shifts in the market, lead me to believe that, you know, realtors are out there saying, hey, listen, if you're not comfortable, then your offer is good enough where it is. And that helps build the confidence. Now, is it like that in every pocket? No. You know, but doesn't mean to say that there's not an opportunity out there that you're going to be able to take advantage of. You have to, as, as much as possible, just remain positive and just know that you're doing all the activities. It's a numbers game. It's going to happen. And you just have to stick with it. And a lot of times I tell my clients that, listen, it, it, we're, we're going to submit at least this many offers. I'm just setting the expectation now. You are, it is, Unless your offer is accepted on the first try, I mean, we're both going to go play the lottery that day, <laughs> you know, but it's, you know, it's something that we need to be having a conversation with. Just be, be frank and real with them, you know, um, and I, I do want to say that the ALC yesterday um, on our meeting, guys, we spend, you know, one day a month and, and, and really like strategizing and understanding how we can best help y'all um and and we i mean there are a lot of passionate people on this board um irene i'm gonna go ahead and give her a big shout out she's new to the office um she reached out and says hey i'm i'm your mentee i'd love to go and have coffee with you listen that is what we're here for i mean there is a reason why we're assigned you know the the alc member that we are reach out, use your resources. Don't feel like you're at this alone. I mean, and I, I think I had a benefit of joining Courtney team immediately. So I immediately had a, a safety net. I immediately had this sense of comfort, but I know that some of you guys are doing this individually. Lean on your ALC mentor. We want to help. We are coming up with strategies, ways that, you know, we can get better classes and, you know, Use us. Okay. Anybody else out there before we end this thing have something they want to share about the market? Maybe you're in a different market than we're in. Maybe you yeah. sell in East Atlanta, whatever. Maybe you sell in Buckhead. Anybody, a buyer that wants to, buyer's agent wants to share, here's what I'm seeing out there. Guys, that helps anybody at all online or here in this room? Um, I have something to share, Marlene Quiroz. Oh, all right, tell us, Marlene. So I, I had, you know, a listing two weeks ago and, um, you know, I did the open house. It's just, it was a nice uh, house located um, in Sprayberry. And, you know, I was uh, hoping, you know, like having multiple offers. Um, so I had the open house. A lot of people came and loved the house. I got very good feedback. But the funny thing was, yes, I received my first offer, which was a uh, $5,000 above the asking price. But after that, I received a lot of phone calls from the agents and everybody was asking, do you have an offer? And when I said, yes, you know, because you cannot lie, everybody was saying, okay, if something happens, let me know. So nobody, nobody put another offer, <laughs> even though they were super interested and they gave me their information and they assured me that they wanted to come back. So we, we stayed with the offer we had because, you know, it was what my, one, my clients want. But I just realized that now agents are saying to their clients, you know, well, if there is one offer, I'm sure it's above asking price, so let's not go for it and wait. So I think that's a big difference from two or three weeks ago where I was <laughs> in a different situation getting multiple, multiple offers. Yeah. Like when did we take over an answer? Like when did that happen? Mm -hmm. Just get agents, agents' clients are exhausted. 
I just had two, one at 450 and one at 600, very qualified, that we can't anymore. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, they decided to step back because we were exhausted. Mm -hmm. All three of us, and yeah. they happen to be two brothers because it's not that we, like we weren't putting in offers forty thousand dollars over mm -hmm. and not getting it. Also, you can only take so much of that from all people, yeah. And, and I totally agree sure. with them. I'm like, when it changed, we'll circle back around, yeah, sure, yeah. Um, but <clears throat> for for the for the agents that are calling, like, we have a you know, an offer. Well, are you accepting it as an offer that your your seller can't refuse? Understand, you know. Again, it's. I mean, I get that. Trust me, I had about five or seven of those this year. VA, FHA, various price points. Um, I mean, and and I want to. I, I I truly personally want to get away from that. It's a challenging market conversation. We've got to switch it. You know, words are powerful. I tell, you know, if you know me, I'm, I'm, I'm a big advocate on, you know, what we think about, we bring about, we might be customized and, you know, <laughs> all this stuff. But words are very powerful. And for us to, you know, continuously say that, well, we have the power to change it. I mean, just change the mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe just taking it a step further, well, is it an offer that your seller can't refuse? Maybe as a follow-up question. And you won't call the agent because I've had a couple tell me, you know, my call the agent and her response was, well, I've already got an offer and we're, we're going to probably cancel that one. So can we send you an offer? No, we're, we're going to cancel that one first. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, so call and say, yeah, but are you telling me that it's signed? Well, no, we're leaving it on with an offer. Yeah. I ask questions. There's maybe yeah. out there. Tell her agent yesterday, she got 20 offers on a $400-some-thousand mm -hmm. on the house. And the twin meeting again, you have any agents that call or talk with her? Or <laughs> yeah. so the rest that. of them send it all for you. Yeah. Send it, send it. Because they they didn't think the offer never worked. Hey Jim. Yes, ma'am. Hi, this is Karen Cohen. Um, I just wanted to shout out to Jennifer that she has been such a tremendous help to me through my entire uh, time at Keller Williams. We came in about the same time and she is truly there for you. You can call her anytime. Yes. And I absolutely adore her. Um, I'm doing this late. I'm sorry. I'm trying to take care of my daughter who's just had surgery, but I have a buyer's need that's really urgent. I have a up to 2 million all cash, nothing to sell uh, buyer who wants to be in East Cobb or ACC or even Sandy Springs or Dunwoody. And I've shown them about 23 homes and we need something fairly soon they have five and a half kids and um they really do need something so if anybody knows anything please shoot it to me i'm just i'm getting desperate at this point what is the price range on that up to two million i have something can you put your email in the chat box i will do it Thank you guys so much. And Jennifer, thank you again for your words of wisdom today. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye, guys. There's a little bit of a change of the market right now. Take advantage of it. Take advantage. I'll tell you what, if someone's going to get out there and get these next listings. As Michelle said, there's a lot of stuff coming back on the market. So pay attention. Mm -hmm. And hang it there. And, and, and that check your own attitude and what you think, what you expect. This is never going to work. I'm not going to tell you, but it's never going to work. Not to get it back. Don't assume that. Send it off for a minute because you never know what's going to happen. Just send it off. Anything else? Yes, I want to add a tidbit from a buyer's agent recently that we worked with who, on her contract, her offer, she submitted and said, Borrower is flexible or buyer is flexible. Ask. I mean, so that deal got chosen over 15 other offers because the flexibility aspect of the closing date. Um, so, I mean, you don't even have to pinpoint what the flexible on, just put flexible and it might help you out. Jim, I saw something last week that I've never seen before in 16 years was I was CC'd on the offer and my with my contact information, which I thought was a great idea. And it said, and I've CC'd the lender 
um, please, they're you know expecting a call or please feel free to reach out. And find it. Oh, well, wow, that's a great idea. I've never thought of that before. That I mean, was maybe you guys can do it all the time. Really? Was it? Yeah. Really? Because they, right. Yes, because the lender actually called yeah. and made me feel very comfortable about the offer. Mm -hmm. And hey, I'm like, let's roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> let's roll. Okay. Guys, remember that agent on the side, she or he is your co worker. They're not your enemy. But you know, that, once you get silent to them, pick her, pick your offer. Talk to Michelle about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Michelle. All right, guys, thank you so much for this. Have a, have a great week.